Republicans warning terrorists could be infiltrating America's wide open border after the horrific attacks in Israel. Over 150 people on the FBI's terror watch list have been arrested crossing into the U.S. so far this year, and that has Kevin McCarthy sounding this alarm. Just in this year alone, there's 151 from 160 different countries. In my own state, we caught two coming from Yemen on the terrorist watch list, from China and others. Why are they coming to America? What do they have planned? And who are they communicating with? President Biden has said previously that he believes the number one threat to America is facing is climate change. The number one threat killing Americans is terrorism. The number one threat is an open border. A shocking new congressional report finding that the Biden administration has failed to remove 99 percent of illegal immigrants released into the country. And new Border Patrol data shows thousands of special interest aliens from places like Syria, Yemen, Iran and Afghanistan have come into the U.S. illegally. Greg, you alluded to this in the A block as saying that, yes, we've got a problem there, but we've got a, we've got a serious problem here on our own Border. Yeah, I mean, the non-border is actually a symptom of absolute weakness. Uh, for we've in this country, I don't know why, but in the last, I'd say, 20 years, we've demonized strength as a characteristic of the oppressor. So anytime you exercise any kind of strength, discipline, or will, that's somehow wrong. It's the same way that we handcuff the police during the riots or commerce in response to shoplifting or any kind of crime. We are governed by the weakest group of people in our nation's history. You could grab a class of auto mechanics from a trade school, put them in charge and you'd get a better outcome because weak men love weak borders. I mean, even the world of Barbie had a border. I don't know if you saw that movie, that is, yeah. but uh, again, I mean, you, made, you, you know, we talked about, uh, he said that the, the biggest threat was climate change. He, he also said the biggest threat, domestic threat was white supremacy. Right. Uh, think of the opportunity cost there. What we lost in safety and security because Joe preferred to indulge the left wing drug called identity politics because, you know, it made those faculty lounges like him. Uh, we are now in a state of weakness where we are at our most vulnerable. We, are, we never at a time of day we had such a weak administration and such a huge threat to coincide at the same time. Judge, the other thing that comes to mind is that it's not just that you have uh, people on the terror watch list coming across the border illegally and staying in one place. Now they're, they could be anywhere in the country. And how do you track them? You can, they can be anywhere and we're not going to track them because we don't, I mean, we let them in. I think it was in, uh, in, in 2021, as, as you said, 99% of the migrants who came in are staying in the United States and that's 2 million people, 99%. Now let's talk about Hamas. If anybody thinks that Hamas is not already in this country, I think they're naive. Because when you think about it, that what happened in Israel is about the extinction of the Jewish race. It's not about territory. And if Hamas hates Jews, you know that they're in this country as well. And what the Biden administration has done is he has allowed a wholesale entrance. He's made this, this country nothing more than a global landing spot with benefits. No questions, no DNA, no nothing. And even if they do tell you you have to go to court, you don't have to go for another six or seven years. Right. I mean, we look like fools on the world stage. And, you know, Michael Waltz, congressman, indicated that there's a history of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps working with the Mexican drug cartels to enter through our open border. So we, and, and think about it. Israel is a little Satan. We are the great Satan. It, it, we are inextricably tied to Israel, and we have allowed Hamas to come into this country along with all kinds of people. One and a half million getaways. We don't even know who they are. Yeah, right. We got a problem. And if they would have even been on the terror watch list, because right. you, you don't know. Brian? It was an opportunity. So he knows he's got a huge problem on the border, not because Greg says so, although he should be listening to you, Thank but you. because the mayor of New York City the mayor of Chicago, the governor of Massachusetts, the governor of New York, everyone is telling him, you got a huge problem here. Now this happens. In that speech that uh, mostly was good, he could have said, listen, Title 42 is back in place. This is our version of the pandemic. 
Uh, if, my, if my number one thing as a president of the United States is to keep the American people safe, I don't want to take any chances. I just saw the number that Dana put up. It has Iranians that have come here, uh, 659, uh, over the last two years on the terror watch list. So I think that this is a reason, uh, not on the terror watch list, but have come through here and have a, a, a registered. I think that's a problem. Pakistan as well. They've been a problem in the past. Syria has, is a big terror state, 538. Yemen as well. So I think the president used this opportunity. I'm putting Title 42. I'm going to be tied on Iran. He'd have better prospects on the election to be really cynical. How about just close the border? <laughs> yeah, but he needs an apparatus to do, to do his job, evidently. Uh, last word to you, Jessica. You never want to be on the wrong end of a declarative statement like X is the biggest threat, right? Because something else can show up. I mean, before 9-11, we didn't think that there would be terrorists that got pilots' licenses and were hiding out, you know, in, in and around us, and then were able to take nearly 3,000 lives, right? But that's the expectation now that something like that is possible. So, of course, it is possible that somebody, God forbid, could leak through on a border. But it is important to consider the facts about this, at least up until this point. So I went back and looked at testimony from someone who works at the Cato Institute. He went before the Subcommittee on Immigration, Integrity, Security, and Enforcement in September. He said, zero Americans have been injured or killed in terrorist attacks by illegal immigrants or asylum seekers who entered through the, sou the southern border. And over the period from 1975 to 2022, the chance of being murdered in an attack by a foreign-born terrorist was one in 4.3 million per annum. That's just important to consider in all of this. I understand that you want certain things from President Biden. I don't necessarily think, and this isn't because I don't care about the border, that today's speech was about that. Today's speech was about Israel, and he had just gotten off the phone with Netanyahu, who, who obviously expressed to him what his priorities were in terms of what he'd like to hear. But do keep that in the back of your mind as you say that now, like Kevin McCarthy, you know, this is the number one threat. It, based on the data, it absolutely... It absolutely isn't. Until it is. Until it is. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.